Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Gwenelle Matos. Most students call me Dr. Gwen. And I am so thrilled that you're here today with us to talk about Perspectives in Diversity, our brand new class. Let me tell you a bit about the agenda. I'm gonna be telling you a bit about me, a bit about the course. We'll talk about how the course was actually created. Then we will have a, a discussion with our uh, esteemed professor who we interviewed, Anisha Dubois. And I'll also be talking to two of our students, Gabby Chicas and Jessica Hunter, who are currently in the class, so you can hear their perspectives as well. And then we will open it up to some Q and A. So please feel free to ask your questions. You could put them into the Q and A section and I will be answering them live uh, after we're done. So I went to FITM and I am a proud FITM graduate. I saw that FITM was already an extremely diverse and inclusive place when I was here and it continues to be that place today. I teach mostly in the general studies program. I teach art history, the creative process and different history of design courses. And I felt highly privileged to be asked to co-write this course with Dr. Monica Carvajal and now teach it for the first time this quarter. And I wanted to take a moment to read you the course description so you have a bit better understanding of what this course is about. So this course examines the subtle and overt ways in which society marginalizes and discriminates against groups of people, including, but not limited to, racial, cultural, and ethnic groups, religious groups, women, the elderly, persons with disabilities, gender fluid, fluidity, and the LGBTQIA plus community. Students will not only study the historical realities, institutions, and a legal system that enable discrimination to continue, they will delve into the roots of hatred, fear, and bias, the very foundations of prejudice and discrimination in order to become conscious of and active in their own contributions to a more just and inclusive society. Now, I know that sounds like a lot to cover in a 10 week quarter, but we are doing it. This class was created after the horrible events that happened last summer with the death of George Floyd, uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many other people of color who have suffered under systemic racism and often lost their lives because of it. And from that was created not only this class, but also the Black Student Union. As FIDEM continues its dedication to students by offering counseling and by being a safe and inclusive environment for people of all backgrounds and all orientations to come together. Before I get started, in the topic, I wanted to address something that came up as far as why FITM didn't post a blue square in support of anti-Semitism. FITM also didn't post a black square in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Part of the reason is that FITM is really about interpersonal action and is about creating cohesiveness and, and inclusivity inside the campus itself with Black Lives Matter and with, uh, I'm sorry, the Black Student Union. And like I said, with counseling. Also as faculty, all of us got together with our colleagues and also with our department chairs and directors to look at how we can make the curriculum more representative of the students who attend the college. So FITM has always taken inclusivity and diversity very, very seriously. And it is against anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, against Asian hate, white supremacy, against hatred against women, against hatred against 
Hispanics and Latinos, any types of racism, homophobia, and against ableism. FIDM is a place that welcomes creatives. It welcomes a sense of community and coming together for all students, faculty, and administrators. It's really an incredible place to be. And so now let's go back to the course. Something that was so amazing about creating this course with Dr. Monica is that it wasn't just about us. We actually spoke with the Dean and the head of the general studies department, Cheryl Rabinovich, who brought together a very diverse panel of instructors where we all brainstormed together about what should this class look like? What should it incorporate? Um, what shouldn't it have? How do we make it relevant? And then we met with a panel of students who were also highly diverse to discuss what they felt they needed from the class. And then we took the course outline and all the assignments to them so that they could tell us what they found relevant and what we could tweak or change or something maybe we hadn't considered. So it was a very, very collaborative effort to make sure that it was as cohesive and relevant for students as it could be. And I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is going to be a model that FIDM is using going forward when creating new classes because it is about the student and it needs to stay about the students. So now let me go to introducing Anisha Dubois. She did a phenomenal interview with me that was so relevant and so interesting about racism in the fashion industry and gave us an eye-opening and honestly surprising look, I would even say shocking look at what happens behind the scenes in fashion houses and in the fashion industry. And I found other videos that I uh, posted on the module that support what she's saying as well. So welcome, Anisha. So Anisha, right now you're muted, good. So Anisha, uh, you've done so many amazing things yes. that I would absolutely love if you could tell us a bit about your background before we go into the topic. Yeah, for sure. So I graduated college in 2006. And from there, I moved to New York and I worked at Music Choice as a programming coordinator for about two years. Then I left there, I moved to DC, where I worked at Comcast Sportsnet as the production coordinator. So I was on the field at all the Redskins and Capitals and Mystics and, uh, you know, um, Wizards games. And then I moved to Los Angeles because I wanted to work for E! News. And I got a job at E! News as an associate producer. And I did that for two years, this two year thing with me. I don't know what it is. And then um, I wanted to get more into fashion. And so I got hired at Wild Fox. I was their PR director for about two and a half years. And then I moved to uh, Australian fashion labels and I became their PR director of America for about a year and a half. And then when we parted ways, I launched my own luxury e-commerce e-tailer called Well Unknown, which focuses on emerging luxury brands. Um, I do voiceovers for Nickelodeon, as you can probably tell <laughs> my little voice, um, Nickelodeon and Mattel and American Girl. And I also wrote a, a self-help journal entitled It Always Works in Your Favor, where I detail my experiences with the universe and manifestation. And I am a adjunct professor at FIDM, which I love. <laughs> and I teach the New Media Public Relations course, aka Intro to PR. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> wow, as if that weren't enough. So amazing. Thank you so much, Anisha. It's always such a privilege sure. to hear about your expertise. And you were so amazingly supportive about getting involved in this course. What was it about this course that made you want to get involved? Um, I think just the title, just hearing the title, Perspectives in Diversity. You know, you hear the, di the word diverse, diverse, diverse all the time, but what does that mean? At the core of it, it's people's perspectives. It's people from different, um, you know, diverse backgrounds. It's their perspectives and how we can all, you know, uh, 
in, enjoy and live our best life, you know, with, without hate, um, with understanding each other. So when I heard the title, I was like, I am here, whatever you need me to, to do, to speak on. Um, so I think that in itself, and then, you know, me being a black woman, um, you know, when I got to Wild Fox, um, and maybe not to any fault of theirs, but, you know, they had no people of color. I was the only woman of color. At, and I was PR director at that company. Same with Australian fashion labels. I was the only woman of color, um, you know, in America as, you know, the PR director. So um, I, I understand it and, and my job, it wasn't my job. It wasn't in my job description, but I just automatically thought it was like, we're not diverse enough. You know, why aren't our models? Like I'm the PR person and I'm all about this company's image. Why is there no one that looks like me? in these clothes? Why is there no one that looks like me being gifted? Why are we gifting influencers that are my color? Um, so it, it, when I heard about the course and you know you reached out to me, I was absolutely all in. <laughs> Thank you so much. It means so much to know that we have support of our colleagues and especially someone like you who can speak from experience. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, mm -hmm. um, Please share with us yeah. your impressions. But before we do that, okay. I would just love in the chat if we could get people's opinion about with all of this racism that we saw in the fashion industry with, uh, let's see, there was the noose neck necklace from Burberry. Um, there was the blackface with Gucci. There was um, H and M. Didn't H and M do something with mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. monkey sweatshirt with the little boy? Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, so so there were there were quite a few things going on. Um, put in the chat. Do you think that companies naively do this because they don't have enough people of color, or why? How does this slip through the cracks? Go ahead and tell us your opinions, and I'm going to go to the chat and just uh, read some of, these, some of these comments. So I'm gonna give you a moment and uh, let me see if I can perhaps uh, play. There we go. This way we can really see Anisha. <laughs> and um, let's see, do we have anyone answering? Why does this happen in the fashion industry? I think people are still answering where they're from. So I'm seeing quite a few people are here. Welcome all of you. It's so wonderful to see all of you joining us here today. Um, so, okay, so here we have some people who are answering. So Edgar R says that it's deliberate, but companies often excuse themselves as naive. Good, Denise says, um, I think it's a combination of some companies thinking any good publicity or any publicity is good, as well as companies not thinking that it's important. I think this is a mix of ignorance and also a lack of diversity in their team's personnel. Arielle, thank you for that. Herman, for publicity, question mark, question mark. Uh, Audrey, ignorance, inherent racism. Kenneth, what? All that is madness. I can only think that they live in bubbles. <laughs> and also, uh, let's see, we have so many other great comments here. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Nisha, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm saying this incorrectly, I feel that this slips through the cracks because of the lack of diversity in these places. And it's just white people approving things they don't know about. And Kaylee, I think this mainly happens due to a lack of empathy and a surplus of ignorance. Dina, sadly, I think it's deliberate. So many of you are on the right track. So Anisha, please let us know your experience with this topic. So my experience is I believe that it's done on purpose. And let me tell you why. When when these it's not like one person at the company does like draws out a design, holds on to it, 
prints it on a shirt themselves, photographs it on a model themselves and puts it up online for sale or pushes it down a runway at Paris Fashion Week, right? Like it's not a one person job. These designs, they're design meetings, like from the, from the ground up, there's design meetings. And, you know, a bunch of people sitting in a room, the design team, they sit in a room, they come up with these designs and then they sit all of us in a room. Like literally we sit in design meetings, PR does. We sit in design meetings and they ask PR, they say, do you think Vogue would feature this? Do you think Who Would Wear would feature this? Do you think Paris Hilton would wear this? Like those are real conversations. Those are real questions I would get um, at both companies I work for. And I would say yes, no, maybe so. I'd give my feedback. Like they asked me because I am the liaison to the editors, right? So I'm kind of in tune with what the editors will feature. So they ask me these questions. And also too, PR is in charge of the company's image. And I just don't believe that, you know, everybody was on point. It's, I feel that it's done deliberately um, because you, you, you can't tell me that these people in these rooms that no one thought, let's say if we take, um, what, let's take, uh, let's take like the new necklace, right? You mean to tell me no one, no one thought that that, hey, this is not okay. No one in the design from sales, sales has to sell this stuff. Sales has to sell it to Saks and Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom and whatever you know their doors are. They have to sell this product. So no one in sales said anything. No one in design, when they came up with it. No one said, yeah, we shouldn't do that. No one in PR and marketing said, no, nah, maybe we shouldn't do that. I feel that, you know, if, if someone did feel a way about it, I feel that it's a battle of ethics, which is what PR is. You battle ethically. Do I do what's right? Do I say what I feel is right? Or do I keep quiet and keep my paycheck? Or I'm new to the company. Do I sit and not say anything? I'm a little timid. Let me just, if you know, if I'm the only one saying something, I don't want to be outcasted or blackballed. I'll just keep quiet. And it's a battle of ethics. So from the inside out, when I see these things happening, I know for sure it's on purpose. And what happens is they get all of this press, right? Normally they may be on fashion sites and then they, they do these, you know, deliberate, ignorant racial designs. And then they're on CNN and TMZ and todayshow.com. And for two seconds, they're canceled. We're canceling. We're never wearing H&M again. And then <laughs> you know, then H&M makes, you know, 40 million in Q2, you know? So I think these brands, they feel like they'll do it just to get the publicity, get it going. And then they deal with the ramifications later. Or it could be that they just may not care because even if no one on their team is diverse in sales, design, PR, marketing, even if no one is of, of a diverse background, we are all aware of what slavery looks like. We yeah. were all from internet, whether you were taught in school to the internet, you know what slavery looks like. You know what a noose represents. And no one said anything. So when it, when they when people say like, oh, it's a lack of diversity, we're going to do better, we're going to hire. Like, but you you knew, you you knew. And so for me, I would just, in my, in, in my opinion, I just don't believe that they're naive or it was a mistake. I feel like they do it. They do it on purpose. And they say, we'll deal with the ramifications, if any, later on. And why do you think the fashion industry gets away with this? Why is it such a little slap on the wrist? And why isn't it that more celebrities aren't truly boycotting the brands? Because it seems like that's the only way to get them to stop is to hurt the bottom line. I, I think it's that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, I think a society like jumps from what we're going to bandwagon on. Like we're going to boycott this and we're not going to do this. And then, you know, we're going to boycott H&M. But then if you have somewhere to go and you need a quick t-shirt or sweatpants, you're probably going to walk into H&M. I think it's just our, um, like what we concentrate on. So we can't like, it's, you know, we're pumping it up on social media. Don't ever wear H&M again. Don't ever wear H&M again. And I, I think T.I., one of the rappers, he was really on this boycott of H&M. And then it just went silent. And you don't hear anything else about it. I remember when Revolve had the controversy when they made the sweatshirt that said, uh, being fat isn't beautiful. It's an excuse. Like, you know, they had that and, in, in, you know, they came out and they issued an apology um, and people, oh, we're going to cancel. We're never going to wear. We're not going to support. And then recently Revolve went public. Now they're a billion dollar company. 
So I think it's just, um, you know, it's just what we focus on, you know, as a community. It's like, you know, one thing happens and then it kind of dies down or, you know, then something else greater happens and we all focus our attention there. And then this kind of goes, you know, by the wayside. So I just think it's our attention span and, and we just move on to the next, you know. So it's because it's so fast moving that it yeah. just kind of circulates and goes through it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to some of the, some of the uh, responses. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, a noose necklace uh, that is problematic on so many levels. So true. And then Edgar, fear of saying something to people in a position of power. I can totally relate to that feeling. I mean, we can imagine that a lot of our students who would be brand new in the industry might feel intimidated, might be afraid of never finding a job in the industry again or being able to get a recommendation if they were to say something. Um, then from Kenneth, I am particularly troubled by the monkey thing you mentioned. I once questioned the thinking of a designer about the Paul Frank monkey design. The, diner, the designer saw nothing wrong, which I couldn't believe. And then uh, it's just complete ignorance. So true that it is just complete ignorance. Now, from your opinion, mm -hmm. what, what can, what could, what could create a solution inside these companies? Would it be having more people of color? Would it be having some kind of inclusivity committee or is it still the bottom line is that bad publicity works, so they're just going to keep doing it? I think I think they can hire like they can hire a team of, you know, um, di diverse people. Right. But I feel like it, it's up to the people who are within the company to say something. This isn't right. I'm not going to stand by it, because at the end of the day, when when those racial you know designs come out, that those people are everybody in that company, you are all responsible because I'm pretty sure you all saw it and no one thought to say anything. So again, they can hire, you know, 14 people that look like me, but if those 14 people who look like me, um, you know, don't say anything then, or don't, you know, have the courage maybe to speak up because maybe they're new to the industry, um, you know, or whatever the case may be, then we're back at square one. So I think in order for real change to happen, there needs to be people with empathy and people who, when, when it comes to a battleground of your ethics, you choose what is morally right. And you say, let's not do this. We are not going to do this and don't do it. You know, because if you think about it, like a, a H and M or these companies, they really, do they really need the publicity? Like they really don't need it. Like they, H&M and Burberry and like these are multi-million dollar companies. So they don't need, you know, a CNN feature to, you know, <laughs> gain them four more million. They don't need it. So when they, when we say, do they do it for publicity? I just feel it's, it's just done on purpose. Like, let's just, let's just do this to be ignorant. <laughs> I, no. My personal opinion, that's just you know, how I feel again, because I just know from the inside out how many eyes go across these designs. And yeah. you tell me no one, of, of at least a hundred people, no one saw anything wrong with it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to some of the comments in the chat. Unfortunately, people don't wanna mess up their paycheck to do what's right and advocate if it means their coin will be affected. And then uh, Dr. Monica says, news media has been all over the incidents that have taken place with Amazon employees finding an actual noose in several of their companies. It's unimaginable that any fashion company would produce and sell a noose necklace. Totally, totally agree. And I love that you mentioned empathy, Anisha. The media doesn't help by giving these companies publicity. It's systemic. Consumers and professionals are responsible. Absolutely. And yeah. Stephanie, they definitely know what they're doing and they know it's going to put them in the spotlight. It's, P it's a PR stunt always. Agreed. Now, when it comes to students finding a company that supports what's important to them, 
as perhaps people of color or as someone who's part of the LGBTQIA plus community. What can students do to vet a company to make sure that their morals align or their ethics align with the companies? Um, I would do research. Like, you know, when you're going to work for these companies, you know, you're not like, you're like, you're, you're an asset to them, right? So like, they're going to interview you and do their due diligence and do background checks or whatever, you know, whatever checks, criminal, whatever checks that they do, you do the same thing. Look them up, see what uh, past employees may say on glassdoor.com. See what, you know, Google the company. You can literally like put in like the company's name and bad press in Google and see what comes up. Like do your due diligence with these companies. You know, um, personally, when I when I got when I wanted to work for Wild Fox, um, I didn't do my you know due diligence. I didn't do my background information. And so when I worked for the company, don't get me wrong, I had you know it was an amazing career, but it often became a battle of ethics. Me doing what's right versus I this is a little bit wrong, and I chose to leave the company for that reason because I morally I just can't I, I can't sleep at night knowing that this is happening so I left um Wild Fox but I would just tell students to you know they're vetting you you vet them as well it, because at the end of the like when you go and work for these companies that's your name attached to that too so when something bad happens it's gonna look bad on you. So let's say if you leave this one company and then you go to a next and they say, oh, you were at this company when this happened. Why? Because you were in charge of it. You know, especially if you go into PR and marketing, you were in charge of this campaign that was racially insensitive. You were in charge while this, you know, negative, you know, thing happened. So, um, or you were in charge when this happened and your company didn't say anything, you know? So, uh, just do your due diligence. And because you always want, you know, rep your reputation is everything, right? And so it can often precede you. So I think do your, do your homework with these companies for sure. That is absolutely great advice. And that tip about your reputation is also on the line in being affiliated with this company is also a great point to make sure that you are aligned ethically with the company before you, um, before you interview with them. Yeah. Um, so we are getting some great feedback too on the on the chat. So Robert says free PR at the cost of color of people. And uh, let me go back always followed by a weak apology. Absolutely. And Denise, that's something big that we don't tell students An interview is as much um, for you as it is for the company. Absolutely. That when you are going into interview, you are interviewing the company as much as the company is interviewing you. And uh, then from Jay, look in their financial records, check out where they donate for tax write-offs. Excellent. Uh, do research on the higher ups and anyone with power over your possible position. Excellent advice. And Edgar, that's a great point about knowing, like really knowing it by heart even and understanding the mission and the vision of the organization we choose to invest our time in. This is one of the reasons I decided to work in state government specifically related to housing in California. Edgar, thank you for what you are doing. And hi, everyone. Remember to change your message to, oh, and that is from someone who's, who's kind of moderating, moderating this. <laughs> so, Anisha, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh my, my, so my, amazing. My. Let me see if there's anything in our questions now. Um, let's see here. Um, so I'm going to answer this one live. So now that it's time for brands to walk the walk after they talked about change and diversity and posted their black squares on Instagram, do you see brands evolving pu publicly and behind the scenes? Um, I, I think that, I think it just goes back to the core of people, you know, they can, they can, you know, say to us, you know, oh, we're going to, we, we apologize. Like someone said, a weak apology, right? Oh, we are, we are, so on the outside, we apologize. We're so sorry. We didn't know. But then on the inside, the core of the company is still doing the same thing, you know? So I think it just starts with, it starts with everyone here today, all 44 of us, you know, like we, we need to be the change. 
So, you know, when I got to Wild Fox, I made sure there were people that looked like me. How dare I not? Same thing with Australian fashion labels. Um, so when you get into these companies, you be the change. And we just work it from the inside out because that's the, the only way. It has to be people like us who, again, have empathy, who feel for people, you know, who want everyone to be treated fairly, you know, everyone get the same opportunity. So um, it just starts with, it starts within. And I think everyone who has been chatting with us, they're, they're right on, they're right on point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they get yeah <laughs> absolutely. I agree. And thank you everyone so much for your chat and you're getting a lot of love, Anisha. Thank, so you. thank you again for your time and for sharing your wisdom with us. My pleasure. And now I will move us to talking with my current students. So I invite Gabby Chicas and Jessica Hunter to come on with us, please. Hello, both of you. Thank you so much for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. And um, I would love if you could quickly introduce yourselves, say what major you're in and how long you've been at FITM, please. And I will start with you, Jessica. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Jessica. I am a fashion design student and I have been at FITM since the beginning of last year. I started in January of 2020 and I will graduate in September. I've just gone straight through. So most of my time has been online, but I've had the great opportunity to take these classes. So it's been great so far. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Jess. And Gabby. Um, hi, guys. I'm Gabby Chicas. And this would be my third quarter of my first year at FITM. I'm a digital marketing student. So it is, so far has been really fun and learned so much. So <laughs> good, good, good. I'm happy to hear that. So I have several questions to ask you. And the first one I would like to ask is, why did you choose to take this class? And can, can you describe it? I can go first. Okay. Um, go well, ahead. the reason I chose this class was because I wanted a different um, environment from what from I'm used to, because as most of you guys, I'm assuming you guys took a lot of social studies class in high school. I wanted something different. I wanted to not be sitting in a class and learn about the same history I learned in high school and learn the same things about the, the same. So I was really looking forward to like finding something new. And that's why I chose this class. Like this class gave me the opportunity to just to have a conversation about a lot of things and just the class is just amazing. And you learn so much about a lot of things and there's like, it's a safe space for you to talk and have these conversations where everyone has different ideas and you just like, learn so much not from just like the teacher but also from the students so that's pretty cool that's why I chose this class great thank you so much Gabby and how about you Jess I was really excited when I first heard about this class I think I heard it through it um by it through student activities and I was like please let this be a class before I graduate because I was like I have to take this um I honestly like didn't know what I was going to get myself into with taking this class you know I was just like it sounds fun perspectives and diversity let's do it you know and I'm so glad I took it um like Gabby was saying it's such a safe space to talk about very sometimes hard topics um we really dive deep into the class and which I appreciate like it, I I'm so glad that it's not just you know surface level um that we dive deep. And for myself, I'm learning so much, you know, I felt like I had a decent grip on a couple things, but now just like learning so much more through the teachers and students and interviews that we see is just so beneficial just to myself outside of, aside from fashion design, you know, it aligns with that, but just for everyday life, you know, it's just one of those classes that you can take what you learn and take it with you throughout your day. Oh, good. Thank you so much. And I'd love to get more and unpack some of your answers. Um, Gabby, you talked about it being a safe space. And I think Jess, you agreed with that. Can you talk more about how as a class, we create that safety and what we did at the beginning to ensure that happened? 
Well, in the beginning, we had a whole section or like a class to talk about the things that makes us uncomfortable and like the signs that we take when something makes us angry or just emotional in some way. We really like took the time to talk about these things like, okay, how far can we take this? What are the things we can do if we are feeling a certain type of way when the conversation is getting too heated? So we really had like not grand rules, but a basic like structure of like how we deal when situations are getting out of hand, when the conversation is not, it's not a conversation anymore, but an argument. So I think that was like really helpful with like this is like making a safe face because now everyone just feels like, okay, this is not a place where it's not going to be a debate. Like it's not like a debate club that somebody will like bottle up with like some like, oh no, I'm against that. But like, it was more of a, you're having a conversation and people are going to listen to you and you listen to other people. And I think that was pretty great. The first, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you for that, Gabby. And Jess, do you have anything to add to what Gabby was saying? Yeah, um, just that first class, I really think that it was so important that we set that foundation of respect for one another. Um, That's pretty key, I feel like, and that's kind of what set the the tone for the rest of the class and just kind of reminding one another like okay this is another person you're talking to you know like this is your peer this is potentially your future coworker. you know like this is somebody that's just like you you know and we all come from different backgrounds different experiences and just kind of putting that first and keeping that um kind of at the front of our minds as we go into these topics and then just really honing in on the fact that it's like, okay, we're going to treat each other with respect and we're going to listen, even though we may not necessarily agree with everything that somebody else says, but we're still going to give them our, our attention and, um, our time of day, you know, while we're all here having this conversation together. Absolutely. And I think that part of this class was creating what we're not seeing in politics and society right now, which is a place where we can actually listen and have conversations and model what a truly dynamic conversation should be like that's full of respect and actually listening to each other and paraphrasing what we're getting from each other before we chime in. So we're showing that we're actually listening. So thank you, both of you for your answers. And the next question I have, how, how is this class different than other classes you've had at FITM? And I'll start with you, Jess. Yeah, um, I would say I've probably only had one other class at FITM that was more discussion-based. Like I said, I'm a fashion design major, so everything that I'm taking is either digitally or sketching or fabric-wise, but I've only had one other class that was more conversation-based, and I think that's one of the big differences compared to all the other classes is that this one's for sure more conversation-focused, but it's also the only class that really focuses on learning and appreciating other cultures and backgrounds. And, you know, like we, you don't talk about that. It's not talked about in other classes and it's not talked about when you're styling or, you know, and so I think that it's really important that we address that, you know, and address it, but then also choose to celebrate it in ways. So, um, I think that's for me, at least what makes it, um, one of like the different classes at the school. Thank you for that, Jess. And how about you, Gabby? How has this class been different for you? Um, For me, because as a digital marketing student, I take a lot of classes that are about like consumers, like how to make consumers happy, how to promote things to them. So it, it's always been about like what the consumers want from me. I have taken a lot of classes about just all of that and just the marketing in general like so far and although it's like my first year I think this class if kind of rely more not on the aspect of like oh I'm trying to sell to people anything but like I'm trying to understand the people I'm selling to Mm. so I think that was like pretty cool about this class that it was like different because all my other classes were like okay now you have to do this and this so you can like buy that like they can buy this and now this one is like okay understand them first 
in like you know how to like do things especially like now with like everything that's going on in the world like marketing and like all these like businesses need to actually take a time to understand their people and like understand the things that are going on or else it's just gonna be like what we, they were just talking about with um anisha that things go sideways when people like do bad publicity so i think that was pretty cool and different about this class mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you for that gabby and i think based on what i'm hearing both of you say that there is some overlap with this class and you being able to use the skills that you're learning from it in your professions later on. Can you say a bit more about that, Gabby or Jess? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just in my time here on earth, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a class where you actually focus on social issues or you focus on the backgrounds of like other ethnic groups, you know, and I think that that's so important because we live in a diverse world, you know, and if we don't ever address that, we don't ever talk about it, then you don't, you don't know what you don't know, you know, and so I think that it's so key that you study or take a class like this because then you're learning more about yourself, you're learning more about other people's cultures, and then with that, it's like, now you have a greater understanding and appreciation. And I think that that kind of gives you a head in being able to connect and um, work better with people that you usually wouldn't have before, you know, or you choose to put yourself in those positions where you can team up with them. And, you know, you, whether, whether that's through like work or friends or whatever, you know, I think that it's so key that you at least gain that appreciation. Thank you for that, Jess. And Gabby, how about for you? We're talking about the overlap between this class and potentially what you'll experience out in the real world. Um, I think this class is a great way to just understand and just kind of dive, dive more into um, being around more diversity and just perspectives in general, because everyone in the real world, nobody's gonna hold your hand. Nobody's gonna tell you it's gonna be okay, sweetie. Like everyone's gonna tell you the hard truth. And sometimes that's very hard for most. And it's better to know that there are different opinions and different perspective and just, just more diversity in the world now that you're studying like for any career than having been a career later on and somebody be like, no, that's not how it is. So I think this class just kind of gives you a heads up of like, this is what it actually is. And now for at least for my career, I think it's very helpful because now that the world is changing more into a, um, a digital point of view of things, like it's not like paper and like newspapers and stuff like that anymore. Um, it's helpful because Every, you can find everything on on social media and if you do something wrong it will be there forever so just even the like companies they need to like be more aware of that so I think that this will help me in the future for whatever company I work for and just trying to make things better and work better without actually like messing up in certain types of way so I guess that's how <laughs> Okay, thank you for that, Gabby. Yeah, definitely being more aware of our language and how we are making sure that people are more inclusive. So I'm seeing a comment from Robert here that I said, I wish that a class like this had been developing long before now. I think it will be really, um, I think it will really help to bring students together and allow them to really focus on area, an area of life that are not discussed normally, especially since we have such a diverse selection of students. Everything is not just black and white. I totally agree, Robert. Thank you for your comment. And this sounds so enlightening. Yes, thank you, Ginger. Appreciate your comment as well. And now, um, both of you touched on how you were learning from your classmates. And I would love for you to say a bit more about how the dynamic in the class and how you're learning from your classmates and how it's helped you learn more than just me lecturing in class. What have you gotten from your classmates? Um, I think for me, at least it's, there's a difference between hearing it being taught versus hearing a real life 
obviously everything being taught is real life, but teaching versus hearing someone like that's possibly your age experience and something that they've ever like been through or are going through right now. And you kind of, I don't know, there's kind of like a humanity part of it where you kind of pause and you're like, okay, this person that's like my age, like they're me and they actually went through this, you know, and they can give more of like a detailed response or detailed, you know, this is what it's really like. You know, I know that we spent some time last week in class and some students were talking about like, okay, no, this is really hard, you know, and a lot of what you see or don't see is it's way deeper than that, you know, versus like what's put out there on the internet and stuff. Um, I think yeah. that we just have like a more personal connection whenever you can hear somebody else's voice and their tone and just their real life experiences. Um, that That's for me, at least, that's kind of what's more beneficial hearing it from our peers, you know, cause we get to share, this is what I've been through in life. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And please, those of you who are watching, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A and we will be happy to answer those for you. And Gabby, if you would be willing to answer that question as well, as far as what you've gotten from your classmates. Um, like, I, I totally agree with what Jessica said. Like, it kind of gives it a sense of humanity when it's not being taught by already scripted lesson. Like, and no shame to all the teachers that have like already scripted things, but it just feels better to have a firsthand point of view of a lot of discussions that we do because it's kind of raw and just, you know, that it comes from the, like the pure from their heart. Like they're not thinking, oh, I have to say this to make you feel better or have to say this to cover up my real thing. So I think that was very, like very like fun to do and like also very like enlightening because um, all of the discussions that we had so far, I learned so much about certain things that I thought I had a grip on, especially about my own community or like communities like near me that I want to support that I didn't know. And I, and I was kind of ignorant to those things. And it was just like, wow, like you really taught me something because I thought it was this way. And you said it in a complete, like you changed my complete like perspective on what it actually is. So I think that's pretty cool that everyone is, everything comes from like deep down from the heart. Like they, nobody's trying to like cover the answers or like, I like think, oh my God, the like prefer doctor um, when is gonna mark me wrong because I said this and I'm going against her like point of view. Like that's the thing that's pretty cool that everyone is like not afraid to say their opinions and we're also safe to say them without judgment or being marked down or anything like that, so. Thank you for that, Gabby. And the last question I have for both of you is what is the biggest takeaway you have from this class? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I, there's no way to just kind of like pinpoint it, you know, because like what Gabby was just saying, like, you think you have a grip on something and then you show up to class the next week and you're like, wow, <laughs> you know, your mind's just like blown each week. But I mean, yeah, there's just like, I can't pinpoint it. Honestly, all of it has just been so enlightening and refreshing and just, I think what we need, like more of what we need right now you know, like you're going through school, we're in like uncertain times, but you're given the opportunity to talk about it. And you're given the opportunity to figure out with other people, okay, how do we, what can I do to work through this? You know, what can we do together to help support each other? So honestly, for me, it's all of it. <laughs> well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Jess. And how about you, Gabby? Um, I, although I do agree, like all of it's like, you always feel like something, oh God, <laughs> was that my mic? I'm sorry. Um, I think like everything, you take a lot, like every week is something different. You're always, everything catches off guard, honestly, in this class. Like, and it's not, not in a bad way, but like, just like, even like, even with the teacher, she will come with a different type of hair every week. <laughs> so that's, that's something you, you, you really want to like go for class too, but I think the biggest impact on me that this class had was 
my way of trying to be better in voicing and and like supporting other communities other than my own. I think it has really helped me trying to um, not in a way trying to help him without trying to be condescending or like doing it the wrong way or not the way that it's supposed to or maybe in a way that might offend others. Like I try to, this class has really helped me understand like I might think that I'm helping, but it might be not. It might, it might be not. So it has really like kind of see the signs and be like, okay, you know, this is what you can do. This is what they think you're doing. So think about that. So it really has helped me with that. Like, just like, that's the biggest impact, but I'm kind of more aware of the things I say, aware of the things I like, just my things, like I'm very opinionated person. So the things I say out to anybody about anything and not like in a way like, oh, I'm like, um, keeping like holding myself back from my giving my opinion but just the way I'm saying it without being disrespectful or discriminatory or like stereotypical to anybody because nobody wants that even if it's like the truth or whatever you think it is but yeah like nobody wants that so that's the biggest impact that this class has really had on me so yeah thank you so much both of you I really, really appreciate your time and your honesty and your willingness to talk to us this evening. So thank you. And all of you who are joining us today, if there aren't any more Q and A's or any more comments, I just wanna thank you so much for joining us and to just tell you a little bit more about this class. And of course, thank you, Anisha, for joining us as well. Students have an opportunity to hear about the history of slavery and to hear it entirely reframed by Andre Barnwell. They have a chance to hear about uh, next week about how the workplace laws have changed to support people of color and those who have been marginalized by an amazing talk given by Mona Eisman. And they also hear about uh, someone who has been imprisoned for close to 20 years, Ray Torres, talk about his experience. So students are definitely getting exposed to a lot of experiences. And they also take a self-assessment before or at the beginning of class and at the end of class, an anti-defamation league assessment that has them look at their own personal biases and something that we look at for the entire class. And many of their assignments are around looking at current events and also their own personal impressions, like with uh, programming and packaging that has biased uh, overtones in it. And they share that with each other. And there's a place to talk about it safely. They also talk about music that has positive and lasting impressions of inclusivity in it. So this is definitely a class that gets them to expand not only their worldview, but also their personal perspective. So thank you, thank you all of you. I look forward to hopefully having more talks like this and please feel free to reach out to me at gmatos at fitum.edu if you have any questions. Thank you again for joining us. Have a good night.